Most entrepreneurs get stuck working in the business and they never take time to work on their business. So you're probably not going to succeed. If you wake up at 4 a.m. every day and you work for three hours in the morning before anybody else is awake, and before your competition is awake, guess who's going to win? You can do as well as everybody else and do the same things as everybody else, but that's not going to work if you want to go to a different place. That's mediocre. That's average. And that's not what we do here on the <laughs> Defiant Life. What's up, guys? This is Keith. And this is D. And this is the Defiant Life Podcast, where we defy the laws of mediocrity. Hey, you got it right. <laughs> hey, you know what I'm saying? The That's eighth good. time's the charm. <laughs> where does that saying even come from? The third time's the charm. charm? Yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. Mm, we got to look that up. No idea. You That's what know? Google is for. Yeah. True. That's or what ChatGPT, maybe. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you crossing over already. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, you are uh, the system, the machine, the darkness. Did I tell you about the conversation I had with ChatGPT? No. About uh, is there a possible outcome for AI where, where it doesn't take over the world? Mm. And ChatGPT was trying to tell me that there was, but obviously could not come up with a good scenario. <laughs> I think Chat G, when you asked Chat GPT that question, it probably started sweating. Sweating, probably. Yeah, yeah. like oh, he knows too much. Yeah, <laughs> it was <laughs> like no, there's definitely protocols, and there needs to be like laws made to keep that from happening. And I was like, yeah, but there's going to be people who are going to break the laws no matter what. And like, yeah, but we can create laws. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. So you're saying there's no chance. <laughs> wow. And it is shut down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was just loading. I don't know. <laughs> oh gosh. Anywho, speaking of chat GPT and productivity and things like that, because we have started, it was kind of a little bit I of a segue. segue. Yeah, yeah. He tried. Sorry. We have actually, uh, guilty pleasure, started using some chat GPT in our business uh, models and some of the things that yeah. we do on a daily basis. Yeah, for sure. How you feel about it so far? Uh, I, so I think it ha actually it's interesting. We talked about a little bit on another episode that chat GPT is kind of taking over the creative roles first, which is not something that we thought it was going to happen with AI. We yeah. Everybody kind of thought about like robots, like, you know, doing your dishes and like doing menial tasks, but it, instead they're taking over like, like uh, I think chat GPT just passed the bar and is now like <laughs> probably the best lawyer in the world. <laughs> so like, yeah, pe you know, we already have like robots doing surgeries and like, mm -hmm. you know, r you can write a book on chat GPT now in like 10 minutes. So like, yeah, you know, it's taken over a lot of the, the creative tasks. So for me, it actually has filled in a lot with that. So like if I'm trying to come up with a name of something, an acronym or like, you know, some kind of ad. Yeah. Yeah. Ad pitch. creative or mm -hmm. ad a uh, copy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Sales pitch. So it's definitely helping with that kind of stuff with creating like content or, or education or whatever. I mean, I got to say it's, pr they, they do a great job. It, he, yeah. I don't know what his pronouns are, but <laughs> it does a great them, job. Them, they, yeah. Don't, know. don't, don't at know. me please. But <laughs> <laughs> if you do, my email is H K. No. Okay. <laughs> definitely not that. But um, it has been very productive. You know, it does take that creative process. So here's the thing. We still have to come up with the idea, the concept, yeah. and then we just need someone to fulfill it. And if you think about it, we've been doing that with Fiverr and Upward and mm -hmm. just people and things in general anyway. So if we have someone who don't get tired, who works for very cheap and is good at what they do, then why not use that? Right? Yeah. I just don't know where it goes for humans. Yeah. Yeah. We I have don't know. No, ro no role in society well, anymore after 10 years from now. Maybe. I don't know. Well, you guys have to check out the last episode or whatever episode that was listed uh, <laughs> where we talked about that a little bit. Into where are the links? Here? There? Yeah, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of um, productivity, this week has been, and it's only, what's today, Wednesday? Tuesday. Today, see, already. <laughs> Today's only Tuesday, and it's already been a hell of a week for me. Yeah. But it started... Last week, unraveling a little bit for me, um, and I've been productive, but some of my disciplinary measures and markers have not been, I have not been implementing those, mm -hmm. right? So my productivity has probably not been as strong as it should be, right. but I can almost trace it back to when um, I stopped implementing some of my routines and things like that, right? Well, what, what kind of routines was that for you? So some, some of the stuff for me it's mainly psychosomatic and then it kind of moves over into the physical. So I have to get my mind right, uh, first. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so if I'm organized in my mind, then it bleeds out into my practical, uh, day and practical things, tangible things. 
Um, so waking up in the morning, I've mentioned this before, doing breathing exercises, doing some meditation, doing cold showers, um, and then also the night before organizing my day. And then that next morning waking up, doing these uh, disciplinary things physically sets me up, gets me grounded so I can start my day and getting up early and doing all those things, right? Mm -hmm. And then other um, pragmatic things that I do for my mind and also just for my everyday uh, use is cleaning out my, tr make sure I'm organized, my space, my calendar is organized, my day is organized, my uh, my tools, like my truck and things like that, make sure it's organized. So everything has a good flow. And if, I'm, if my, my mind, if my world is clear, concise and organized, then I have room to think and be creative and be productive. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot more room to breathe and, and really be present with whatever I'm doing and be, being fully present. When I don't do those things, then my mind is all over the place because I'm thinking to myself, have I forgotten this? Where is that? Yeah. What's next? What yeah. did I do? What didn't I do? Um, and then I'm not fully present when I'm doing things, which results in me having a lack of productivity. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, that's kind of how it's been for me already. And it's only Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> right. So what do you do to get back on track? So first of all, I have to recognize what is going on. I have to take inventory of my life at mm -hmm. that point. So I'm feeling out of sync. I'm like, man, I feel kind of, ah, I'm not really grounded. I'm not really settled. And I look around and say, okay, well, what's my mental checklist or what's my physical checklist like? Have I been doing my breathing? Have I been doing my cold showers? Is my truck? And, and I, know this stuff, I know this stuff seems, you know, random and things like that, but that's what I have to do to set myself up to be yeah. successful. So, like, my truck right now is not organized. It's stuff all over the place, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> <laughs> I need an oil change, right? <laughs> my tires. Um, I, I haven't taken a cold shower this week, right? Yeah. So just... Like I'm, I'm waking up and I'm doing things, but I'm out of sync. So I can, tr like I said, I can trace back to it. So what I got to do is just get back on it. Let me tell you a quick story about myself okay. real quick because I was about to say something. Go ahead. So when I was young, <clears throat> my mom told me to clean my room one mm -hmm. time. My brother and I, we used to share a room. I might have been seven years old. And the way my mind is set up, what I would normally have to do is start over from scratch. So I remember this one particular time. I went to the extreme. I took all the clothes out of my closet, threw them in the room, all the clothes out of my dresser, just piled everything up and made a big mess to start over and then tried to go from there, which is really ridiculous. In my mind, I couldn't start from a place of a mess right then. I had to like either have complete demo and start from ground zero <clears throat> and build my way back. <clears throat> or and because me looking at the mess I had and trying to make sense of that was too daunting of a task. Right. Right. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So now I've gotten away from that. I'm, I'm just, it's like, there's no reason for me to create more of a problem. There's no reason for me to wait till the first of the month. There's no reason for me to wait for somebody else to say something to me or for complete calamity to overtake me in order for me to look at my mess, start putting the pieces together and making headway. So, right. I'm unorganized. Um, my head is all over the place. There's a lot of chaos in my life. Okay, what can I do right now? Yeah. You know, let me let me let me let me start by doing some breathing exercise. Let me calm myself down. Okay. Now let me take the first step. Let me clean my truck out. You know, mm -hmm. and then and get some work done. All right. And, and you know, and then the next time, let me you know, and just start to put the pieces back together again. I don't have to wait till Monday. I can do this on Wednesday morning right. with my whole routine over again. So just yeah. doing what I need to do right now, knowing that. There's never going to be a perfect time to do anything. If you can do something right now to affect the change, just do it right now, you know? So. so so how important is not just the things that you're doing, but just routine in general, like doing the same same sort of routine Yeah. on a, on a I guess, a uh, predictable basis? Yeah, you know, um, <clears throat> it's, 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 it's pertinent. Um, it's paramount for me. To be, yeah. because if not, um, have being someone that is decent at a lot of different things, has a lot of different interests, um, I can get easily distracted, mm -hmm. um, by myself. Yeah. And just in my mind, I'm thinking about different things. I might hear a song. I might see a bird, you know, I might, you know, get a phone call. <laughs> You're probably not going to notice the bird. <laughs> I'll probably not. we got the bird whisperer over here. Bird man. <laughs> anyway, we, we have to talk about that another time. <laughs> What's your bird? Hold on real quick. 
This dude, I'm going to talk to y'all real quick. This dude, we were outside talking about business or whatever. He, hey, hey, hey. I was like, what's going on? Did you hear that? Hear what? <laughs> that was a female cardinal. <laughs> what? <laughs> I like what? birds. <laughs> no, that's more than the light, bro. That's a, I don't know. You Anyway, you're a bird whisperer. <laughs> Whipper wheel. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, for me to get in routine is, is paramount because if I don't have organization, if I don't have boundaries and parameters, I'm just going to be all over the yard, period. Mm-hmm. You know, and I've, and I can't, I've lied to myself for too long saying, ah, and, 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 and I'm a master procrastinator. I can find reasons to justify putting stuff off for a little bit longer. If it had to be somewhere, if I have to do something by 11 o'clock, like, all right, I need to get started by 10. And then 10 o'clock comes, like, I, I can really get that done in 30 minutes. I can get started at 10. 30. And, and then it, eventually it's, I'm stressing myself out because I'm trying mm-hmm. to cram a whole lot into 15 minutes, right? Yeah. So I've seen it throughout my life trying to do it that way without any organization, without coaching, without parameters. And it doesn't get me anywhere. It just produces stress and a whole bunch of, you know, ugliness. So it's paramount for me to be organized and disciplined. The best version of myself comes out of that disciplined life, you know? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I think for me, we started um, doing a morning routine a bunch of years ago. And uh, Mm -hmm. we started with doing, uh, what's it called? The uh, Miracle Morning. Miracle Morning, yeah. yeah. And so I remember um, <clears throat> I remember that the mir- Miracle Morning was a good, like, setup for what kind of became the morning routine for me down the road. But the morning routine in general, just having a routine in the morning, I think, made a big difference for me. That's, mm-hmm. like, the big thing for me. If I can, if I can get up and, and start that morning routine in the morning, then my whole day is a lot smoother. And two things. One is the morning routine. One is planning out my day. Mm. So I used a whole bunch of different planners. When I was in college, I used to plan out my days like every day. And then I, there was not a single day that I even came close to being 20% on schedule. I just, I would plan it out, but I never followed it. Mm-hmm. So later I started like using some different planners, trying some different things. I tried uh, the 10X planner. I used mm-hmm. like a bunch of different ones. And I sort of wound up just making my own because there was like little pieces of this one, little pieces of that one that I that I liked a lot. So for me, planning out my day is a big thing. I, and I usually try to do that the night before, go ahead and plan out the next next day. So when I get up in the morning, I already have my plan. I already know what I'm going to do. Huge. Yeah, that's a big thing for me. And now I actually stick to it for the most part. So that's a good thing. <laughs> but also um, having a morning routine that makes sense is really important. So the big thing with doing the miracle morning, the savers was just that it was so much little, so many little things to do. And it didn't really get me focused. It like, it was like more loss of focus, more, Mm -hmm. more, not necessarily distraction, but it was like stuff that wasn't really leading to product productivity. Productivity. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I got with, um, started doing the, uh, what's it called? I can't remember, but it's Craig Ballantyne's morning routine. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that one was like life changing for me. That was a really good one because in his morning routine, you basically get up and you get to work as soon as possible. And you, you hear people like Alex Hormozzi talking about this too. Like the thing he, he talks about one of the things that like changed his life the most was the, the decrease in time between wake up and work. Mm -hmm. So the faster you can get to work in the morning, the more creative you're going to be. You don't have like mental fatigue happening yet. Um, you don't have decision fatigue. You, you're able to think clearer. You're able to be more creative. And that's the time when you can really make stuff happen. So I started getting up at like 5 when I started doing maybe 5.30, I think is what I started with, with his routine. And so basically the whole thing is like get up, maybe take a few minutes to wake up, like, mm-hmm. you know, make some coffee, whatever. I think his thing was like petting his dog, whatever the thing is. It, mm-hmm. it takes you a few minutes. And then you go into – work mode and you just at least spend an hour before anything else happens working on whatever the most important thing is for your business or for your life. Yeah. So for me, that might be, um, you know, writing another course or doing something for, for the curriculum or whatever, um, putting together systems for the business, whatever that is, the thing that mm-hmm. builds the business. So most entrepreneurs get stuck working in the business and they not never take time to work on their business. Mm-hmm. And so they wind up, always feeling cluttered, never having their systems in place. 
never being able to bring good people in and train them properly because they don't have any good system set up for them when they come in. Um, on, the real, on the real quick, because you just <coughs> said a bar. That was good. You said most people, most entrepreneurs, <coughs> entrepreneurs work in the business and not on the business. That's right. Bro, that's heavy right there. That's really yeah, that, that's, that's a big thing that you see. So you see people like really stuck in the day to day and they're never able to grow because they're stuck in the day to day. Um, so, so if you're, if you own a business or if you're trying to move forward with stuff like that, the best time is usually going to be in the morning before your phone starts ringing. For me, it's before the kids get up. So like I started out at five 30 doing that stuff. Then I went back to five and then I started going back further and I wind up just ending at four P four AM as was like the wake up time. I, I kind of like five as a good time, but like, um, any, really the thing is you need to wake up an hour and a half before you need to do whatever you need to do. So if you have to leave the house at six, then mm-hmm. you need to wake up at four 30. If you have to leave the house at eight, then you need to wake up at six 30 or before. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's like your minimum. That gives you a few minutes to, to, to get up, do what you need to do to get awake. Then you work for an hour and then you can get ready and go out right. and leave the house, whatever that is. Right. So for me, my kids wake up at like six 45, seven o'clock. So if I get up at five, then I've got a good hour to an hour and a half that I can work. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I can, you know, get ready and leave the house and whatever, help them get ready. So, um, but that's, that's the time when you're able to most stay focused because there's not distractions around your mind is sharp. Um, you're, you're not distracted by a whole lot of other things. It's just, it's the best time of day for you to actually get stuff done, especially if you're a creative person and you're trying to, you know, or you're an entrepreneur, or you're trying to do, um, you're trying to build something. Mm-hmm. That's the time that when you can build it. Well, let me ask you this. What about those people that are listening right now that are saying, well, I'm not a morning person, you know, well, I'd rather stay up at till okay. midnight to do what I, I need to do. What do the, you say to them folk? Does that belief serve you? <laughs> this belief that you're not a morning person, is that serving you in your life right now? It's, mm-hmm. it's nothing but a belief. That's all it is. I was not a, I was not a natural. I don't know that anybody's naturally a morning person, at least not in your younger years, mm-hmm. but um, really it's just, it's, do you want to, it's what your belief is about yourself. Your belief about yourself is that you're a morning, per, you're not a morning person. And so my question is, does that belief serve you and where you want to go in your life? Mm-hmm. If it doesn't, then just change it. Mm-hmm. You don't, you can become a morning person if that's what you want to do. So pretty much how's that working out for you? <clears throat> yeah. If it's, if, if, yeah. if you being a night person and not a morning person is working for you, okay, that's cool. Go for it. But for the vast majority of people, if it's not, then try something different. Correct. You know, the, um, here's the thing too, getting up early, doing these routines and everything is great. <laughs> and it's two things. One that one thing I didn't really anticipate was me. So getting up at four o'clock, four fifteen, and then going to bed around eight thirty or nine at the latest. Yeah, it's cool for me, but for <laughs> my family, they're like, "Ain't that you know what I'm like? We just got finished eating dinner. You winding down? You Rip Van Winkle?" Like. <laughs> so, so that's one thing I really and I'm still trying to do because my family, my kids are teenagers. So they stay up later. They're not getting up mm-hmm. at 4 o'clock. They're not getting right. up. My daughter gets up at like 6 o'clock. My son gets up at noon, you know, and they're homeschooled. So as long as you get his stuff done. That's that's kind of a natural rhythm for a teenager. So Right. Yeah, yeah. and that's fine. Yeah. You know, as yeah. long as you're getting his stuff done and figuring that stuff out, you know. That kind of, uh, real quick, that kind of reminds me when I was in the fitness world. I had a lot of people who, like, had terrible sleeping patterns. Most, most people did. Mm-hmm. And so I'd be like, well, okay. What time you go to bed? Uh, well, I'm usually in bed by like midnight. Okay, what time you get up to go to work? I'm like, well, I have to be at work at eight, so I get up at seven fifty-seven. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like <laughs> 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 it's like okay, well, let's let's change this a little bit. Yeah, if you just start waking up earlier, mm-hmm. I think like ninety-nine percent of insomnia is cured if you wake up at five a.m. Mm. Like if you wake up at five a.m. for ninety days straight, I guarantee you'll be going to sleep at eight thirty. Oh, o'clock. I guarantee because you're gonna be tired <laughs> as hell. <o'clock>. Exactly. <laughs> like <laughs> the people who like really have trouble sleeping, in my experience at least. Yeah, I'm not a doctor. Okay, mm-hmm. but <laughs> disclaimer: <laughs> I played one in the gym sometimes. <laughs> um, hey, <I> see you. <laughs> with these, like with with almost everybody that I work with mm-hmm. in the fitness world, like if they had trouble sleeping, if you can actually convince them to start getting up at a certain time every single day, mm-hmm. uh, then 
it, it resolves itself almost every time. And like, that's how it was for me. Cause I was, I used to sleep in like when I was in college, whatever. And mm-hmm. I was in college until I was 30. So mm-hmm. <laughs> when I was in my twenties, <laughs> yeah, I would sleep in, I never scheduled a class before 12. Right. So like I would wow. sleep in until 11 and I would stay awake until two, three, four in the morning because that's just what I had programmed myself to do. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't a morning person because mm-hmm. I chose not to be, but if you want to become a morning person, I'm living proof yeah. <laughs> that you can. Because when I made the, when I when I decided to make the change and start going back earlier and earlier, then it was not hard for me at all. Yeah. And I used to have really bad problems trying to go to sleep, mm-hmm. and it was just because I I didn't have a good routine, I didn't have good habits. So most of the time, you can change that just by simply changing your habit. And really, the number one thing is if you wake up at the same time every day, you wake up at let's just say five o'clock, six o'clock, whatever it is in the morning. Uh, and you do that consistently, your bedtime will also consistently yeah. change to whatever it is that, that allows you to get enough sleep. And I think I think our bodies crave that. Oh, for sure. We crave routine. Um, yeah. And also just, I don't know, man, you know, nothing good happens after midnight anyway, right? You know, <laughs> That's y'all what go, they say. Y'all go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. I mean, there's, there are people who are successful who stay up for late. For sure, for sure. And that's fine. If that's working for you, yeah, totally fine. But if you're trying to make a change and you're trying to get better, you're trying that's to grow, it. then, you know, that's one of the things that's a really simple change. Like, most people who are not successful are not waking up at 4 a.m. and getting to work and working for three hours before work. Right. They're just not. So, right. like, here's the thing. If I get up at 4 a.m., and that's my my time to get up. And I'm learning every single day. I'm if I use that for education time, if I use it to create whatever it is, like if, if let's just say that I use it for education, it doesn't matter where we start. If you're not doing that, and and like let's just say I'm of average intelligence, mm-hmm. then that you will never catch me. Well, you, first of all, you said of average intelligence puts you a little bit above <laughs> average, right? Well, <laughs> I'm just saying like unless you have no, some I kind of you, yeah. severe learning disability or right. mental disability, like for the average person. If you wake up at a certain time, if you wake up at 4 a.m. every day and you work for three hours in the morning before anybody else is awake mm-hmm. and before your competition is awake, guess who's going to win? Like, mm-hmm. it's not even a, it's not even close. And and your competition is never going to catch you right. if they're not doing the same thing. So if you want to get ahead, like, uh, okay, this also brings me to another point. Okay, <laughs> I had a lady one time I was training in the gym. She came in. She was frustrated because she wasn't where she wanted to be after, you know, she was a few weeks into our program or whatever. And I was like, okay, well, uh, you, your workouts have been great. So let's, let's look at, you know, some of your other habits, what's going on. So mm-hmm. I told her, do a, uh, do a food log for the next week. Let's look at what you, what you got going on. Mm-hmm. So she brought in a food log and I had given her a nutrition program, but her food log had like bread and pasta and all this stuff. And she's trying to get super lean. So we were like, you know, that was not on the program. (laughs) So, Mm -hmm. so, uh, I'm like, okay, well I see that you got this, this, and this going on. And she's like, yeah, but that's just a little bit. It shouldn't really be mattering that much. I think the workout should be doing, you know, doing more for me or whatever. I was like, listen, Mm. if you want to get to bodybuilder shape and you are not willing to cut out bread or like sweets or whatever the thing is, then like, we're not, we can't even have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So, you, well, you're in the wrong place, basically. Mm-hmm. She got all mad, mm-hmm. but she wound up leaving. And I was like, listen, like, if you're not willing to follow the, uh, follow the program, then it's, it, it doesn't even matter what's happening in your life. Like, you're, you're not going to get to this point. Absolutely. So it's a, kind of the same thing. If you are, if you want to grow in business and you want to actually succeed at a level that's greater than everybody else, then you got to do more work than everybody else. You yeah. got to do different things than everybody else. So if you're not willing to push your wake up time back an hour so that you can work in the morning before you actually get up to do whatever your day has, Mm -hmm. then you're probably in the wrong place. You're probably not going to succeed or at least not if you want to go to a different level, right? You can do as well as everybody else and do the same things as everybody else, but that's not going to work if you want to go to a different place. That's mediocre. That's average. And that's not what we do here on the (laughs) defiant life. There you go. And, and And that's the thing, defiant life. It's a lifestyle. It's a defiant life. Yeah. Right. That's right. Um, And it's been documented. Kobe Bryant talks about that, about his workouts, Mm -hmm. how he will outwork everyone in the gym. By the time you might be doing two days, killing it. Thank you. Doing great. And he is working on his fourth workout. Right. So he so he did math. He said, if you look at it over a span of a career, let's just say five years, I've worked out 
a thousand more hours than you have. Yeah. You know, of course I'm going to be better than you. And exactly. I'm talented, you know. Yeah. And there's been a lot of very successful people that have put in that type of work ethic. Um, Tom Brady, they, you know, I was I remember hearing the story about uh, Tom Brady, how this new guy came that was just joined the team. I can't remember who it was exactly. But he was like, man, I'm going to get in here. I'm going I'm to outwork Tom Brady. So he got up one morning and Tom Brady had beat him to the gym, you know, yeah. and, and and then the next morning he got up 30 minutes earlier and Tom Brady had, you know, been there already for 30 minutes an hour. So then the next morning he got there at like three o'clock in the morning, something ridiculous. Right. <laughs> and Tom Brady being maybe the most competitive person, you know, because he's not the most talented. <laughs> right. Right. And Tom Brady being like the most competitive person ever to play, to hold the football. The dude got to the gym at like three o'clock in the morning. He was like, oh, nobody's here. I, I think I finally beat him. You know, <laughs> so he started working out. <laughs> Tom Brady walks out of the showers, threw his towel on him, like, "Hey, man, <laughs> you can't beat me." Anyway, I'm, you know, I butchered the story, but that's the, you know, that's the thing. Yeah. And Tom Brady was the, he's the goat. It's, I think it's safe to say that we know that Tom Brady is the goat. Yeah. You know, um, and there've been so many, and even think, think about people like George Washington Carver. It's been documented that he would get up before day in the morning mm -hmm. and come up with his inventions. This was he would get up three, four o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and spend time before the sun got up. Before they didn't have cell phones and things back then, but. He, I'm sure he had to have some quiet time for him to think. Yeah. And he probably had a routine. That's probably when he was the most creative. That's yeah. probably when he had the most, you know, dedicated time to do those things. He came with most of his inventions three or four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. You know, there's a few things about that. I think, you know, I was just thinking like that was probably before alarm clocks. Right. So, yeah. so, uh, <laughs> before the rules, before, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was listening to, uh, Tom Bill, you and, um, Alex Hormozzi both said the same thing that they get up on average, like three, four, maybe five in the morning, mm -hmm. right? But they don't set an alarm. They just go to bed at the same time every night. So mm -hmm. it's kind of the opposite of what I was talking about before. Mm -hmm. So, like, I think for people who have trouble sleeping, though, you, you, you probably need to start with a, a set wake-up time. Right. Stick with Agreed. that every day. Yeah. Once you get in that routine, then you just start waking up earlier. And the big thing is don't hit the snooze button, you know? I think Jocko Willing Huge. says that, that uh, somebody, uh, I can't remember who it was that said it now, but... Um, they said, like, the alarm clock is a dream killer. Like, mm -hmm. if you have dreams, whatever it is, that snooze button is going to kill your dreams if you keep hitting the snooze button, right? So, like, that's good. you got to think of the, the snooze button as the as the dream killer. That's, like, the worst thing you can do. It's actually worse scientifically for your body to, to yeah. go back to sleep for five or ten minutes anyway. Mm -hmm. So, like, as soon as that time hits, just get up. So, Tom Bill, you was talking about his morning routine. He said that he goes to bed every day. I think he said 9 o'clock, something like that. And he has a set wake up, a set bedtime every night. He doesn't have a set wake up time, but he naturally will wake up at like four or five in the morning. His rule is within ten minutes of being awake, whenever he first wakes up, he doesn't go back to sleep. Mm -hmm. Within ten minutes, he's out of bed. Mm -hmm. So like, as soon as you wake up, like whatever it is, they talk about like the idea might be what wakes you up. Whatever it is, you wake up. If it's four or five, whatever time it is. That's the time you get up. You don't go back to sleep. You don't hit the snooze button. You get up at that point. Mm. Does that make sense? So Absolutely. Like, so that that's like, I think another way to do it is just go to bed at the same time every night. Get up whenever you wake up and be up and, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So for me, I usually go to bed between eight and nine and then I'll set my alarm, whatever time it is. It's right now. I think I like five better than four maybe, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Whenever I have a lot to do, it might be four. Right. It was right. four for a long while. So anyway, um, let's say it's it's five o'clock. When that five o'clock hits, then you just got to get up and get out of bed. Mm -hmm. As soon as if the alarm is on, turn it off and get up. So for me, I have a, <laughs> I had to get. This was not an easy routine for me to build. I, <laughs> I remember, remember some of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I actually had like five different alarms. So because when I was younger, man, I would like hit the snooze button or I would just turn it off and I'd be asleep. If I had anything before 11 or 12, you could forget about that. I was mm -hmm. not, I could plan it, but I wasn't going to be there. So mm -hmm. like I would hit the button and I'd be back in bed. Sometimes I would set my alarm just so I could turn it off and get back in bed. Bro, <laughs> what? So, <laughs> so for me, what I had to do to build this habit was I have an alarm clock and then um, I would have my phone alarm. I would put it somewhere across the room, right, or somewhere else, mm -hmm. somewhere out of the out of the out of the room at all. So, like right now, I actually put, plug my phone in the bathroom at night. Mm -hmm. I don't keep it by my bed. I don't keep it in the bedroom at all. I take it and put it in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I have an alarm that goes off and then I have to go get my phone mm-hmm. and I had an alarm on my phone. I use this app called Alarmy. Maybe we can get an affiliate for this. Okay. <laughs> I don't have any affiliation with Alarmy, but <laughs> I do like their app. So basically you can set it to where you have to do some math, take a picture, walk a certain amount of steps, whatever mm-hmm. it is. So for me, the picture one works really well. And I, I used to have it where I would go. I had to go outside and take a picture of the street light mm-hmm. to wake up. So like to turn the alarm off. So the alarm will just keep going off until you take a picture of whatever the thing is that you have it set for. Mm-hmm. So for me right now, I have it set for this. Um, I have like a little coffee warmer, like coffee. I don't know what that thing's called, like a coaster, a warming yeah, coaster. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You put the coffee on there. It keeps it warm. Yep. So I have one of those in my office. So mm-hmm. that's my picture is that. So I have to walk out and go into, into the, office. the office. I have to get dressed, mm-hmm. go out, and I'm already in the office at that point. So now it's time to start working. Right? Dang. So <clears throat> I also got a great idea from, God, what is his name? Matthew, the guy that won the CrossFit Games like 1,200 times in a row. No. Oh. <laughs> what is that guy's name? You know oh, what I'm man. talking about, Russ? Frazier. That's right. Matthew, Frazier. look at that. That's why we got Russ. <laughs> shout out to Russ. Shout out to Russ over hey. there. Um, yeah, so Matthew Frazier, he's, he, after he retired from the games, he was like, I got a secret that nobody knows. He's okay. like, this is what helped me win the CrossFit game so many times in a row. He's like, like everybody listening now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's like, I didn't want to divulge any of this stuff until after I was retired because, mm-hmm. like, I want to win. <laughs> mm-hmm. But he was like, my, one of my competitive advantages is my sleeping patterns. And mm-hmm. he was like, I always get, like, whatever it was, eight to 10 hours of sleep a night, whatever. And he was like, the thing, one of the things that helps me is a sunset sunrise alarm. Mm. So I looked this up and got one and it's awesome. So you can set it at night to where it simulates a sunset. It'll, it'll, I think it goes up to maybe an hour. I'm sure there are different ones, but um, you can set it to like an hour and it'll start with a really bright light. And then it, over that hour, it slowly dims and turns orange and simulates the sunset. Because, mm-hmm. like, you know, we're up past, like, I think naturally our bodies are set to start producing these hormones and getting us into sleepy time. When the sun goes down. And when the sun starts going down, we should be outside, but most of the time we're not. We're inside. Mm-hmm. We have artificial lights. We have blue light coming from the TV, mm-hmm. all this other stuff, right? So this is just a way to simulate nature, really. So and it'll actually play sound. So you can play like a campfire. You got the thing going to yeah. crickets, all that stuff. Yeah, uh-huh. And that junk will put you to sleep. So yeah. so that helped me go to sleep whenever I first got it. But I use the sunrise part of it. So the sunrise is basically the same thing in, in opposite. So mm-hmm. let's say I'm waking up at five. That's before the sun comes up. Mm-hmm. So I'll set it to where 30 minutes before the alarm goes off, it starts to, it starts to simulate a sunrise. So yeah. it'll, it'll start with like a, sort of a low orange light and it gets brighter and brighter until it's a bright white light. Mm. So at the time at five o'clock, the light is full effect and you've already been slowly being awakened by this light already. So Mm -hmm. it's kind of like being outside. If you've ever slept outside in a tent, this is a natural thing. Like it's really hard to sleep until Mm -hmm. noon in a tent. Mm -hmm. Like I don't care how comfortable it is. Right. Right. It doesn't matter. It's bright. Yeah. It's really bright. Same thing for me. Like when the window, that's why it resonated with me so much. Cause if I have a window open or like the blinds open and the sun starts coming in, it wakes me up. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the same thing with this alarm clock. It does the same thing. It simulates that sunrise. So it starts to wake you up slowly. And also like, if you just have an alarm and all it is, is a sound, you might be, deep in sleep Mm -hmm. when that goes off you're gonna feel terrible Mm -hmm. so with this it like slowly wakes you up and you feel good like when you wake up you're awake it's not like jolting you from deep sleep and you feel good about being awake yeah yeah exactly like like, the morning is the enemy yeah with me i'm a little bit more extreme i like pain to some degree so (laughs) when i when i get up i go in the bathroom turn on the the light it's like (laughs) boom you know what i'm saying it's like (laughs) if you remember uh what's the dude wesley snipes and those vampire blade, blade, and yeah. then you turn the light on these vampires, and they just that's how I yeah. feel good in the morning. It's like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm awake, you know. <laughs> Hop in the cold shower, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not that extreme, but then and then so what happens is I have my office light on, and all my stuff is set up and everything, and then I just walk in there, and it's just it's bright in there. I'm like, all right, mm-hmm. here we go, and yeah. um, I start the coffee. I don't drink a coffee until about an hour when I wake up, but I set the mm-hmm. I set the the coffee alarm automation thing so that it just start making it an hour after I'm supposed to be up and then I smell it. And then it's like a cartoon. I just, you know, <laughs> downstairs and, and everything. It's and it's like, you know, the best part of waking up is, you know, so, um, is what 
is I can't I don't know if I can say that or not. You know, it's certain things you can't really say. You can't sing the happy birthday song. You can't say let's get ready to. You can't say that. <laughs> I don't know when that stuff t- when that stuff t- right, Russ. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he just the producer was like ah, about <laughs> to get canceled. But um, but yeah, so, so I I would recommend and I like that. Those things are great. But I think that what you what the most important thing is is getting the daylight. When you wake mm-hmm. up, you really have to go for it. You have to wake up. And the way I had to address these things in my life, these disciplines was I had to go in face first, like mm-hmm. sliding the home plate. And um, even when I started doing my cold showers, I had to just not ease into it. I had to just throw myself in it and be like, okay, I'm here for it. And if you can kickstart it like that, then it's going to happen. You mm-hmm. know, if you really want to make a change. I think you really have to bust the door down and say, here, I'm here for it. So I had a light on in my office. I wake up and don't hit the snooze and just go in the bathroom. And then when I come out, walk into my office and I'm like, okay, I'm I'm surrounded. I'm by light. I'm up now. Let's get to work. But the bigger portion of that for me was actually knowing what I needed to work on. Mm -hmm. You know, I think if you, and and so this was going to lead me to the point I was trying to make a while ago. I think the reason why a lot of people struggle with getting up early is like, what's the purpose? Like, I understand Mm -hmm. I need to be disciplined, but what am I doing getting up that early? Because if I'm up, I don't have anything to do, then I might as well just lay back down or watch TV or get on my phone. Yeah. Right. So, um, reading that book, the one thing, um, Gary something killer. Is it Gary? Keller? Yeah. Gary Keller. Yeah. Yeah. By Gary Keller really helped to, um, just organize my mind, my day and give me a sense of purpose um, so this uh, I heard this. Thing, I say this all the time because it was just so profound to me. They um, this reporter asked this one guy this question. Said, "What's the craziest thing you've ever done for money?" And he said, "Work forty hours a week." <laughs> and I was like, "Man, that's the most profound thing I've ever heard in my life." You know? <laughs> yeah. And so they were saying, if you if you you wake up, you endure a lot of things to get to a job that you don't like, mm-hmm. to make not enough money, mm-hmm. you know, and and all this stuff to get taxed you know, a, a large percent, like you do all this stuff for something that you, what if you got up and spent that same energy and the same hour and, and all of that to work for yourself? And that's essentially what you're doing when you get up and like you said, working in an hour in the morning before everything happens yeah. to work on yourself or on your business and not in your business. Right. But you have to know what you're working towards because yep. that in and of itself is motivation enough. So maybe most people just aren't motivated to get up because they don't know or have an identity. They haven't named that thing that they're working towards. So, uh, yeah, well, I think most people just go through life and they're not actually working towards something. Right? No intentionality. Yeah. They yeah. don't really have a, a goal or a plan or like a, you know, they don't, they don't have any, any vision for what's where they're going in their life anyway. So I think for a lot of people, they're just going through the motions trying to get to the weekend. Mm-hmm. So yeah. like, yeah, you know, it's not even like you were talking about like getting up and, and working for yourself. It, it's not, it, it doesn't even have to be your own business. It could just be like, if, if your career is what you're, what you love, you're doing what you love. How can you become better at that? Or how can you become a better parent or how can you, right. you know, it, it, whatever, be better in your relationships. It doesn't matter what it is, mm-hmm. whatever the most important thing is for you. Mm-hmm. That's the thing you should work on in the morning. So that's it could, good. it could be education for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. When you're first starting out, it probably is education. Mm-hmm. You know, that's part of our real estate program. I was, I was writing today was, the one thing make, make your one thing in the morning. If you're going through this program, you're spending all this money to get in here and do all this. If you're, if you're serious about it, if you think this is where you're going with your life, then make that your first thing every morning, Mm -hmm. make that your one thing that you get up and do in the morning. Mm -hmm. And that could be, it could be education. It could also just be like, if you're writing a book, maybe you get up and write a thousand words in the morning or whatever, you know, like I was writing part of our, part of our program. And, uh, I was like, man, I'm, I'm, when I first started doing this, a couple of years ago, it wasn't this program, but I was, I was kind of writing something similar and I was, uh, I just got up, started working. And then every day I noticed, I'm like, man, I'm getting a thousand words a day. Yeah. I'm like yeah. if I continue this, I'm gonna have a first draft of a book in like a month or mm-hmm, two. Like mm-hmm. what? <laughs> I know man. It, it's just, you are so much more productive in mm-hmm. that time in mm-hmm. the morning. So. That's true. I definitely agree with that. Um, <clears throat> We got to have intentionality. We got to have a focus. Like you said, we just, I think a lot of times we're getting up, we're living life. We, we were talking to, I was talking to a, a potential student the other day about the, the real estate course that we're offering, shameless mm-hmm. plug. And we, uh, <laughs> <laughs> click the link. Right. Yeah. Wherever that link is. <laughs> and, um, and he was saying that he bought 
a house because it was a nice house, nice area, yeah. and end up losing money on it. He just didn't have a real plan. He didn't yep. have a real that's game plan for it. Very common, I think. And that's just yeah. with a how we do that in life all the time. We don't have mm-hmm. a game plan for our lives. So like you said, it doesn't have to be a business. It just needs to be a fo- like what are you doing with your time on a daily basis? If yeah. you don't have a focus then there is no focus. Then you just you could you could be headed anywhere, right? Mm-hmm. If you don't have a destination, you might end up in Albuquerque, as Bugs Bunny would say. Yeah. Right. So what are you think about your life? Be intentional with it. What do you want your life to look like in a year's time from now? You know, I know yeah. a lot of time we talk about a 10 year plan and things like that. What do you want your life to look like next year? How many, how many times have you said that but not put a plan forth, and now you're still in the same place making the same resolutions yeah. as you did the prior five years, right? I know some people, they don't even make resolutions anymore. They're like, ah, I don't believe in that no more. You don't believe in what, making a game plan for your life? <laughs> you don't <laughs> well, believe? Well, mo- most people's resolutions are <laughs> BS, so <laughs> they're not really going to do it. They make a resolution, but they're not really planning on sticking to it. I saw this in the gym business, man. Yeah. January was the month. Like, yes. The Every first time. day in January – Oh my God. Like the whole thing, you couldn't get a squat rack or like you couldn't get on a, on a machine. Yeah. All the treadmills are full. Mm -hmm. And then like two weeks later, it's like half of those people. And Mm -hmm. then, you know, by February or March, like the people who were there in December are the people who are there in Mm -hmm. February, you Mm -hmm. know? So that happens there all the time. People don't really actually plan on sticking to that. Why is that? Why, why do people make those plans, but then not stick? This is why bro. It's because, okay. I want to lose 30 pounds by the summer, right? right? What does that look, what does that process look like? What are your benchmarks? Yeah. If I say I want to lose 30 pounds and in two weeks you've lost half a pound, you don't know if that's good or bad. Right. And that can be very discouraging. You don't know what success is supposed to look like on this journey. Mm. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So if I knew that I needed to make, so somebody said you need to make a hundred thousand dollars this year. Oh man, I've never made a hundred thousand dollars. That seems like a lot. Okay. Well, what does that look like per month? What does that look like per week? What does it look like per hour? If you can look at it on an hourly basis, like, oh, okay, all I got to do is make X amount of dollars per hour. That's a whole lot more attainable. You can see that a whole lot better. So I think, we, the, the, like I said, we have to get more focused because our vision is too broad. It's too far out there. We can't see that far, mm-hmm. right? As humans, we can't see that far. Um, there's a reason why we have microphones, microscopes and, I mean, and telescopes and stuff like that. But if we can bring it closer, like, okay, I need to lose a pound a month. Okay, right. and then or whatever the case may be, then that's a lot more attainable, you know. Or, and, and then what are the expectations? Okay, you shouldn't expect to lose any weight for the first. I don't. I'm not trying to. This is just for the sake of the conversation. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying I'm, I'm pretty sure you probably lose more weight in the beginning than you yeah. do for the rest of the time. You know, what I'm saying. But anyway, but if you know that going into it, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, then, yeah. if you start to plateau a little bit, like okay, the first week you're gonna lose, you know. 15% body fat. And then after that, it's going to start tapering down to 1%. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't yeah, know what case You may uh, die if that happens. You know what I'm saying? You may. But if you knew that going into it, it's my whole fight. Anyway, you have to, I think you have to be more specific. You have yeah. to know what your expectations are, right? Yeah. And then if you have a goal, you have expectations. And if you have some accountability, then you won't let yourself fail after the first two weeks. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, that's why. I well, I, th- I think I think you're right about. I think people need a roadmap for mm-hmm. sure, and I think. But I just think a lot of people don't even think about it. They don't even think about their goals. This probably comes back to our education thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, the education system in general. Mm. <laughs> you don't learn how to do that kind of stuff. Nobody learns how to set goals. Really, nobody learns how to like set these benchmarks and create a plan mm-hmm. and come up with like you know how you're going to get to this pl- to this goal that you set. So I think most people don't even think about it like that. They're just like they go to they, they work yeah. this job and that's that's what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And then you know maybe they're saving some money in their their four hundred one k or whatever for for retirement and like that's it. So they're like, well, forty years from now I'll have I'll be able to make two thousand a month off of my retirement. <laughs> and like I guess that, I think that's like where most people are. Most people just don't even mm. don't even have a plan. And I think that's probably a big. That's probably the, the, the biggest section yeah. of the population. They're just yeah. like going through the motions. You know, and then you th- and then if you think about on the other side of the coin, you think about people like Carnegie and, you know, just all somebody look they have a hundred year plan mm-hmm. for their bloodline. Right. 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 <laughs> that doesn't start until after they die type <laughs> stuff. You know what <laughs> yeah. I'm saying? Well, that there's a lot of people who say the further out you can go 
with your goals and your plan, the more likely you are to succeed. So if you've yeah. got, you know, if you can delay gratification and if you can say, okay, well, I'm working towards a 20 year plan or mm-hmm. a 10 year or whatever versus like this, I gotta, I gotta be done with all of this in six months, mm-hmm. you know, um, you can actually get a lot farther that way, but you have to have a, you have to have a roadmap to get you to that. That's the whole plan. thing. That It's the roadmap. Yeah. It, that's the whole thing. It's, it's all about the roadmap to me, you know? Yeah. So I don't know, man. It's, I think, I think hopefully, cause with me, that's how I am. It, if I can see it step it away, like I don't, I don't need to, you know, see, I, I need to know, I want to know the big picture. Right. And then what do I need to do today to make sure that I can get there? Yep. this time that's why I like that's a simple, simple in, in the planner that i created it's it's a you we have a 10 year uh a 10 year vision and then we have a a one year a goal three, yeah. right and then we have a three month so it all it all works toward the, the long-term vision but yeah. we focus on the short term like what am i supposed to do right now mm-hmm. and then we update that every few months we update that short-term goal mm-hmm. and then every year we update our one year and then you know we update the 10 year and so it's it's always getting you to that goal at the end, but you have you have to walk each step along the way to get. Okay, there. so since this right now, I'm dubbing this Keith's corner. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> what oh, would Lord. you recommend for people to do today? Since mm-hmm. life, is, so the first thing is take action, right? Mm-hmm. Got to take action. Okay, what do we take action about? So what if somebody was like, okay, Keith, I hear you. Mm-hmm. What can I do today to ensure that I have a better week, a better month, a better year? What's the first step that they need to take? The first thing is figuring out what your one thing is. He, he says in that mm-hmm. book, the one thing that uh, if you don't know what your one thing is, then your one thing is to figure out your one thing. That's it. So the first thing you need to do is figure out where you want to go, what you want to do. Figure out what the one thing is that you can do to get you to that. Mm-hmm. And then I think you plug that in your morning routine. You get up an hour earlier. Mm-hmm spend an hour every morning working towards whatever that one thing yeah. is. So. so so what we'll do um, is we'll put a link in here how you can get our or get Keith's morning routine uh, journal tablet thing or whatever. <laughs> oh, we, we giving that out now? I ain't say we giving it. I say we'll put a link on how you <laughs> okay. can get it. <laughs> oh, you speak French now? <laughs> we ain't doing nothing. <laughs> but um, if you, if you, if you, you know, I know a lot of people like to have something in their hands, right? Mm-hmm. Which is cool. So uh, he created this journal. We use this journal all the time. And if you will, we'll, we'll figure out how to get it to you for something that you want to buy. Yeah. And I recommend that you invest in your, in your future, invest in your betterment, invest in your productivity. Um, mm-hmm. Since that's what we're kind of talking about today. So got this journal, figure out what your one thing is based off of where you want your life to be, what you want your life to look like. Right. Yeah. Figure out your one thing. Create a morning routine that supports that and that lifestyle and just do it every day. Yep. That's it, right? That's it. That's be it. consistent. Stay disciplined. Be consistent. Yeah. That's another thing. We're, we're successful people, the one thing that probably makes them successful more than anything else is just consistency. I mean, this goes back to the gym business again. Like, it, it almost doesn't even matter what your program is. Mm-hmm. If you stick with it for a year, you're probably going to have some results. You know, and that's why they say practice makes perfect mm-hmm. because, like, um, if you practice something, you will be great and you will do per- whatever it is you're practicing. It could be the wrong thing, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. you're going to be really good at that thing. Right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, <laughs> but sure. anyway, repetition, consistency. I was, I remember Stay consistent. Yep. I was talking to my son one time and he reads very fast. Both of my kids read so fast. And I said, Oh man, like you read so fast. He said, daddy, I just stick with it. I, like he said, most people just stop when they read and they get distracted. He said, I just keep reading. Mm-hmm. And before you know it, I'm through the book. I was like, bro, that's that's good. You that's know, it. So just stay consistent. Anyway, here, here we go. <laughs> cool, man. All right. Well, that's all the productivity I got for today.